So who is gay? I'm gay. First they called him crazy, they called him a lunatic, they called him a liar, then they called him a racist, a transphobe, a homophobe. It's not funny! But regardless of the other crazy claims that he has made over his long career, the fact is they did turn the frogs gay. And if you're lucky, we might be able to see a gay frog today. The same chemical, atrazine, that turns the frogs gay, well, it doesn't even just turn them gay. It actually turns them trans. It messes with their reproductive organs and mutates them and destroys them. And that same chemical atrazine is actually present in your drinking water too. So get this, atrazine is actually 100% banned in the European Union. So the EU banned it completely, but not in the US. In the US, atrazine is the second most popular herbicide, right behind glyphosate, which is Roundup, which is probably just as bad as atrazine. US, we don't really care. We just say fuck it. So if you think I'm not a frog and I don't care about the environment, well, you're a dumbass. Atrazine is in your water supply and it has very similar effects on humans as it does with frogs. So they actually did experiments with mice embryos and they found that mice embryos literally die when exposed to atrazine. And then they did other studies which show how atrazine affects humans. And unsurprisingly, it's highly toxic to us. Literally, atrazine is an estrogen, so which means that it competes with testosterone and tanks your hormonal supply. And of course, you know that testosterone is an important, well, it's the most important hormone for a young man's health. Literally, this is what determines your mental health. It determines your motivational levels. So if you find that you have no energy, you have no motivation, and you have no discipline, it could literally be a hormonal issue. It's not a moral issue, you know what I mean? Like, it's not because you're a bad person or you're a lazy person. Literally, you have poisons in your water that are turning you unmotivated and undisciplined. There's no way. You think I can make it? Let's go. Let's go. This is about to be a challenge. In this self-improvement community on YouTube, we often talk about things like meditation and journaling and all this stuff, which is obviously, these are good habits, right? But making money, etc. All these are good habits, but think about it. You're literally fighting an uphill battle against your body every single day as long as you're being poisoned by these substances in our environment. So I believe the first step in self-improvement is actually a detox, not a dopamine detox, but an actual detox removing toxins from your body. Now you're going to think I'm some kind of liberal hippie type person. It's not the case. I think America is sadly divided on many issues and one of those issues has become environmental toxins, you know, and this is stupid. Both conservatives and liberals should agree that the environment is a critically important part of our well-being as humans and we being the stewards of this planet have a moral duty to upkeep our environment. And of course, even if you're being selfish, literally having a good environment is important for our own well-being. You think I can make this? Whew. I don't think I can make this. I'm gonna try. Okay, almost there. <sighs> We're gonna go. Okay, that wasn't even that bad. I don't know why I was so scared. That's crazy. So think about it. You're on self-improvement. You're doing all the important things, all the good things, meditation, etc. But you're still not seeing results and every day is a challenge and there's no momentum. That's actually not how it should be. If you think about it, self-improvement should be the most natural and easy thing for a man to do. It literally should be programmed in our genes to self-improve. But it's not the case because our hormonal systems have been hijacked by these artificial environmental estrogens which literally destroy our motivation, drive, happiness, our sex drive, and our drive to make money and have success in life. So you might ask, well, is this scientific? Is everything which I'm saying true? 
Well, yes, and I'll link the studies down below. And it's not a secret. Scientists have been talking about the effects of, uh, of atrazine and other estrogenics on the environment and on the human body for quite some time now. But we've just decided as a society to ignore the call. You know, everybody in the so-called masculinity space, they all talk about how you know, civilization is ending and it's all because of feminism or it's all about socialism, etc., etc. I think this is a mistake. I think the bigger problem, which kind of goes under the radar, is literal toxins in our bloodstream. Think about it. Is, is, is an ideology, you know, half-baked ideology, going to have more impact on our success as a civilization or actual poison in our bloodstream? And this reminds me of this one thing I read about the Roman Empire as it was declining. There was more and more instances of people being mad, you know, madness. And you would call that mental illness today. You wouldn't call it madness today. And it was on the rise because of many reasons. But one reason which historians have come to is because there was lead in Roman pipes. So the pipes which Romans got their water from had lead in it. And of course, the Romans didn't know that lead was toxic. So they didn't see the connection between lead in their pipes and increase in the cases of madness and mental illness in their city. So are we in a similar position today then, where we're barely understanding the effect of microplastics and environmental estrogens on our bloodstreams, and maybe a hundred years from today, we'll look back and think, oh, these you know, 21st century people, they, they're literally poisoning themselves and complaining about feminism when the real enemy was actual toxins in their environment. That's why I really fear. We're missing what the real problem in society actually is. Is literal poisons. This is where it starts. Literally, this field is where the atrazine comes to. So this is a cornfield slash a soybean field. And there's literally acres and acres and acres of soy and corn fields in the Midwest, in the USA. And also other places, I'm sure. And it's here that tons and tons of atrazine is dumped and finds its way into our water supply and causes the feminization of men. And you think I might be making this phrase up or this is some kind of manosphere phrase? Not the case. The term feminization of men is a scientific phrase which actual scientists use. It's a real problem. It's a real phenomenon which is taking place in our world today. And people like to blame socialism or feminism, like I said, but I would put the blame first on environmental toxins, literally found in fields such as this. So the question now is, of course, what do you do about it? You aren't going to stop atrazine use. You know, people have tried and failed. In places like Europe, yes, they have successfully banned it and have banned it for years. But in the US, the, I mean, it's not like people don't know about it. So understand this. There's 40, 50, 60 studies showing that atrazine is harmful for plants and an, not, not plants, animals and humans, etc. But there's one study which actually paints a positive picture of atrazine, says that the estrogenic effects of atrazine are not direct. And if you look at that one study, which I'll cite down below, you'll find that that study has been funded by Syngenta. That study was funded by Syngenta, which is one of the biggest herbicide companies on the planet. And of course, there's a conflict of interest there, isn't there? So very suspicious that the one positive study, and even that study is not actually positive, it just says that the effects are not direct. And that study was funded by literally the company which makes this stuff. So it's not like scientists and politicians don't know that atrazine hurts us. In fact, of course, US lawmakers know that European lawmakers ban this stuff. So they know it's harm harmful. Just that US politicians don't seem to give a fuck. It's a different problem altogether. So it's up to you to take matters into your own hands. What can you do about it? You need to buy yourself an RO water filter. So reverse osmosis, RO. You can literally purchase this on Amazon and install it yourself. Or if, you're, you know, if you have enough money, you can get a really good system and have it installed in your home. In any case, you need some kind of filtration system in your home to protect yourself and your family. It's not a matter of opinion. You need one and you need it yesterday. Or you have an alternative. You can get yourself a water distiller and distill water in your home and then, you know, remineralize re it and then drink it. That's also an option. I will link down below. I'm not an affiliate or anything. I don't get any money from promoting these products. 
this is just my job. I'm going to give you the means. I'm going to give you the information. And then it's up to you to act on it and actually protect yourself from these toxins. And that, I believe, is the first step in modern you know, 21st century self-improvement. It's not meditation. It's not mindfulness. It's literally, literally saving yourself from these toxins which are poisoning your bloodstream right now. Do you think that duck is gay? Nah, bro. That duck has a girlfriend. Think about that. That duck has a girlfriend and you don't, bro. There he goes. There he goes. As you know, I do literally read every single comment. Oh, yes. I promised that I'll show you a gay frog today. So if you see a frog, what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch him. I'm going to show him a picture of a male frog. And if he reacts, he's gay. Thank you, Jen, for editing this video.